Welcome to the study of organizational behavior and theory. Organizational behavior is sometimes called org behavior, or even more commonly, it is known as OB. In some circles, it is studied under the heading of work psychology or organizational psychology. The main topics in OB are personality, motivation, teams, and leadership. An OB course that does not cover those four topics is deficient. Other OB topics include perception, attitudes, emotions, stress, etc. The two most common words in these video lectures is, for example. There are an enormous number of concrete examples of many of the key terms and concepts used in the study of OB. These examples are important to your application of the material. Let's get started. To understand OB, we have to understand the role of theory, models, and relationships between variables. Kurt Lewin once said, there is nothing so practical as a good theory. Theories provide us with a framework around which we can construct reality and interpret events. We see something happen and wonder why. If we see similar things happen in similar but not exactly the same way, then we can surmise why those similar things happen. We theorize as to why something like it can occur again and again. Humans are natural theorizers. We use theory to develop models of both simple and complex relationships. What happens when a boss belittles us at work? We get embarrassed. In that model, the cause is belittlement and the effect is embarrassment. We theorize that there is a relationship between belittlement and embarrassment. Our theory is that when humans are belittled, they often become embarrassed. In our model, X causes Y. These models can be construed at three levels of analysis, micro, meso, and macro. With a micro level of analysis, we theorize or hypothesize about individuals and individual differences between people. That's the micro level. At the meso level, we hypothesize excuse me, about teams or groups of people. In the workplace, it could be a manufacturing team or a quality control team. In another arena, it could be the family unit. In families and in teams, the members themselves are different from each other, so that adds a layer of complexity to our analysis. At the macro level, we theorize about companies or industries. Companies are a conglomeration of scores or even thousands of people. Certainly, they are not all alike. So when we analyze at the macro level of analysis, our precision is rougher and our samples are smaller because the population is smaller and true random sampling is actually easier. Understanding the levels of analysis allows us to conduct research on variables of interest and to then engage in management techniques based on that evidence. Physicians consult the latest science before they conduct a new test or administer a new drug to a patient. Managers have a huge body of knowledge in the scientific literature that they can consult. They can find out if X actually does cause Y. They can find out if structured employment interviews are a better predictor of job performance than are unstructured interviews. They can find out how interviews should be scored. They can find out whether a piece rate pay or salary pay is better for assembly line workers. There have been hundreds if not thousands of scientific studies on these and just about every other topic of which one could think. A proper theory or model is probably best when visually displayed. This series of lectures will use IV or independent variable, predictor, and antecedent interchangeably. They all mean the same thing. Similarly, DV, or dependent variable, criterion, and outcome are all synonyms for each other. In a true experiment, an independent variable is manipulated so that one group gets one version or amount of the variable, and the other group gets a different amount or version. Then, both groups are measured on the same DV. It is thought that the IV causes the DV. In a correlational study, where no variables are actually manipulated, we want to see if some IV is statistically related to some DV, but we might also measure a third variable. That third variable might be a mediator. It comes in the middle. It mediates the relationship between an IV and a DV. 
It is a generative mechanism by which the impact of an IV is transmitted to a DV. One example from my own research is that the relationship between personality traits and both generalized anxiety disorder and major depressive disorder are mediated by work-to-life and life-to-work conflict. So, in essence, the impact of personality is transmitted to some disorders via conflict. That should make sense. Some traits lead to higher levels of conflict, and some conflict can lead to higher levels of psychological disorders. A different type of third variable is the moderator. A moderator affects the strength of the relationship between an IV and a DV. It answers the question of whether the relationship depends upon or is contingent upon the moderator variable. Here's an example that is sad but true. The relationship between performance and salary depends upon, is moderated by, one's sex. That is, the correlation between performance and salary for men is higher or stronger than the same correlation for women. We'll look at mediators and moderators in a visual diagram on the next slide, so stay tuned. The ultimate DV is performance. If we are analyzing at the micro level of analysis, job performance can be dissected into task performance, citizenship behavior, and counterproductive work behavior, or CWB. Task performance is expected. Citizenship behavior is a bonus. CWB is undesirable. We'll look closer at these aspects of job performance later in this video, so stay tuned. At the macro level, company performance and sometimes industry performance is the ultimate DV. We can measure company performance by sales dollars, sales units, return on investment, equity, or something else. These are rather crude measures of performance when compared to the item by item instruments developed to measure an individual's task performance. Think about your own job performance appraisals. You probably are not measured on one thing and one thing only. You might get an overall singular score that is an amalgamation, average, or sum of other subscores, but a good performance appraisal measures the depth and breadth of performance. Let's move on. Here we see the prototypical relationship between an IV and a DV. They are connected by a one-way arrow. This implies that the IV causes the DV. Technically, there are rules on inferring causality, but for the sake of simplicity, think of arrows in the diagram as one variable causing another. Between them is a mediator. Remember that the mediator is a generative mechanism by which the IV is transmitted to the DV. There can be models with multiple mediators and even with serial mediators as well. In this slide, we also see two moderators. There can be any number of moderators on which these model relationships depend. There can even be moderators of moderators of moderators. Models with multiple moderators are easy to draw but difficult to verbally interpret. Let's move on. This is the Mars model of individual behavior that lays out much of what goes on in organizational behavior at the micro level of analysis. That is, at the individual level of analysis, which focuses on individual differences. In the far right box, we see behavior, which when construed as job performance, is the ultimate DV in OB at the micro level. The Mars model has multiple IVs, multiple mediators, one moderator, and one DV. This is a model that describes most of this course. In the far left box, we have individual differences such as values, personality, perceptions, self-concept, emotions, attitudes, and stress. Each of these characteristics are what, are what is different about people. Some of them are quite stable over time, like personality. Others are only slightly more malleable, like values and self-concept. The others are more like states than traits. They include perceptions, which can vary wildly within a person regarding the exact same phenomena from one minute to the next. Others in this category of extremely malleable characteristics include emotions, attitudes, and stress. 
these individual differences are all antecedent to the mediators of motivation, ability, and role perceptions, which are the M-A-R of Mars. First, we'll look at the M for motivation, which is defined as the internal forces that affect a person's voluntary choice of behavior. Notice that I said internal forces. So motivation truly best comes from within. Managers typically cannot actually technically motivate other people. All they can do is set up the situation and conditions where individuals motivate themselves. Motivation is comprised of three different components, direction, intensity, and persistence. Direction is under the voluntary control of an individual. People choose to engage in a certain behavior. That is, they choose the direction of their efforts. Intensity is the degree to which they apply vigor and zeal and zest towards achieving specific goals. In OB, we hope they're striving for higher levels of performance. Persistence is the simple stick to of motivation. It is the degree to which people will put, will put forth concerted effort toward the achievement of a goal. It's similar to diligence and related to effort. Ability is the A in the Mars model. Ability is defined as the natural aptitude and learned capabilities required to successfully complete a task. Sometimes these are called competencies. In the field of human resource management, they are known as KSAOs, where K stands for knowledge, S is for skill, A is for ability, and O is for other characteristics. KSAOs are all part of the job analysis technique in human resource management, and these are simply personal characteristics that lead to superior performance. Organizations hire people for what they bring to the job in part. What they bring are certain abilities or things that they can already do well. Organizations engage in a high degree of person job matching when looking at ability level. Some people are better suited for some jobs than are others. Next, we move to the R and the Mars model of individual behavior. The R stands for role perceptions. These are defined as beliefs about what behavior is required to achieve the desired results. It entails understanding what tasks to perform, that is, what is the actual job? What does one do in the job? Does the employee know everything that they're supposed to be doing in the job? Lastly, role perceptions involves knowledge of the relative importance of the job. Role perceptions are strongly related to job performance. In fact, so is motivation and ability. One or two without the other likely leads to low performance. Next, we turn to the moderator of these relationships. That is the S, which stands for situational factors. These are the environmental conditions beyond the individual's short-term control that can either constrain or facilitate their behavior. The strength of the relationship between, say, motivation and performance depends upon or is contingent upon situational factors. Some of these situational factors include time, as when a manager gives a subordinate a really short deadline. Often, inferior results come from that. Budget constraints and all sorts of other resources come into play here. For example, if you have a job as a nuclear engineer and your job is splitting atoms and you show up to work one day and they say, well, we've taken away your access to the Hadron Super Collider or whatever it is that they ordinarily use. And instead, your new tools of the trade for splitting atoms will be this hammer and chisel. Now go split some atoms. Well, the lack of resources in the form of tools is probably going to be something that will constrain your ability to perform the job. You may have high levels of M or be highly motivated to split atoms. You may have high levels of A, which is ability. You understand the job and have high levels of R, which are clear role perception. However, organizations have constrained your behavior regardless of all of these other things because they have not given you the proper or other resources that you need to do the job. Now, much of this semester will revolve around the variables in this model. Situational factors, motivation, ability, role perceptions, and all of the antecedents in the far left box. Let's move on.
As mentioned, job performance is the ultimate dependent variable in organizational behavior and has three very distinct aspects to it. The first and most important aspect is called task performance. Task performance is simply the accomplishment of all the duties that are delineated in one's job description. You're hired to do certain tasks. You get measured on your accomplishment of those tasks at the end of the year. Your performance appraisal should be based upon the duties that are delineated in your job description. That's task performance. Another aspect of overall job performance is something called organizational citizenship behavior, or OCB. This involves going above and beyond the call of duty. This involves things like speaking highly of the organization to outsiders and maybe volunteering to serve on unpaid committees. For example, your company may have an annual United Way charitable giving campaign and you volunteer to chair it. Well, your performance as the chair of the United Way campaign has very little to do with your task performance. In fact, it's probably not going to be something on which your job performance will be rated at the end of your performance period. However, the research is very clear that these things tend to bleed over into one another. People who exhibit high levels of OCB tend to have artificially inflated task performance scores. Sometimes supervisors cannot help but score someone's task performance just a little bit higher. Maybe it's completely unconsciously, but just a little bit higher than their actual task performance simply because they are an effective citizen. Now, sometimes in the literature, you'll see OCB referred to as contextual performance. Just know that they are sort of synonyms. Much like task performance is different from OCB, task performance is also different from contextual performance. This last category of job performance is counterproductive work behavior, sometimes abbreviated as CWB, which involves all sorts of bad stuff and includes absenteeism, theft, sabotage, work slowdowns, and other things. We find that people who are disgruntled or unhappy or stressed out tend to engage in these things to some degree. There are certainly personality traits and job attitudes and prior experiences, etc., which are either more or less likely to predict CWB. The study of antecedents of CWB is a huge field, especially with the advent of ways to measure so-called dark personality traits like narcissism and psychopathy. Let's move on. Next, we turn to some tips for business practitioners. First, examine the research. If you are a student, then you probably have access through your university's library to numerous research databases. I recommend PsycInfo and ABI Inform. You can run all sorts of searches for research articles in peer-reviewed journals. The peer-reviewed journal is the gold standard. Peer-reviewed research articles are submitted for consideration for publication using a double blind review process. Three or four experts in the field are asked to provide anonymous comprehensive reviews of the manuscript. The authors of the paper are also anonymous to the reviewers. Only the journal editor knows the identity of the reviewers and the authors. Most papers get rejected. The best journals have a 90% or higher rejection rate. Of those that are accepted, they often go through two or three rounds of revision and resubmission. Another tip is that the answer to every OB or any management question is it depends. That means that there are an infinite number of moderators or contingencies that affect the relationship between X and Y. A good manager understands the contingencies that matter the most or are most likely to be present. The importance of individual differences like intelligence, personality, values, beliefs, etc. cannot be overstated. This course will spend a great deal of time on these variables. They matter a lot. Because job performance is the ultimate DV, managers must understand how to measure it. That which cannot be measured cannot be studied scientifically, according to Dan Gilbert of Harvard. 
This course does not cover the design of performance appraisal instruments, but understanding the role of dozens of variables in the prediction of job performance makes an understanding of performance imperative. Lastly, read, please read, read books, read your OB textbook, read news sites, read company 10K reports, read your own 401K report. You can learn from all of these things. The true test of how much or how badly you want to learn is how much you read. So, right after you like and subscribe to these videos, open a book. But first, like and subscribe. Let's move on. Thanks. That's all, folks.